Welcome to Deeper Dive. I'm your host, Jay Wald. And this is episode 43, season two. And this podcast is brought to you by Plantation SDA Church. And I want to thank the young lady who makes all podcasts complete. Don. <laughs> hey, Joe. How are you? Bye. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for, for filling in for me. You know, I know. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was kind of weird, but yeah. It was yeah, a- you know, I... I, I know it I'm popular, but I, it, it, you know. <laughs> Modesty. But you, had, but you had to fill in. But you had to fill in, you know? <laughs> Batman has a Robin. Yeah. Michael Jordan has Scotty Pippen. Am I Robin you know, now? Like that. Yeah. I'm Robin now? You're Batgirl. I don't like, I, no, I don't like the outfit for Robin. Oh, yeah. 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 No. yeah. We Robin have to change Robin. that one out. No. But that's good. <laughs> but what a. But I want to thank you. I hope all is well with you. You did a wonderful job last week. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Joe. Mm-hmm. You are welcome. Mm-hmm. And to our podcast listeners, we want to thank you for taking the time out to listen to us, whatever mm-hmm. social media platform that you may be using. Uh, any questions, any comments, even any uh, concerns, you may contact us at, via WhatsApp at 954-388-8780. Mm-hmm. I really think that should be the church's main number. <laughs> That number gets used a lot. Oh, it's a so lot, I know, but it's totally understood. It's totally understood. Uh, guess what we have here back? We have uh, we have one of the shepherds back. Welcome back. One of the shepherds. Yes. Yeah, one of the shepherds. Yeah, I have a name for him, but later I have later. To okay. Call him. Yeah, it's it's gonna catch. I, I, it's got to be catchy. It's got to be catchy, that. right? Yes, but we, <laughs> but we want to thank you, uh, Pastor, Mister Mark. What's it? McCoy. I'm just gonna put it just like that. McCoy. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it just like that because you've already known. Everybody knows you. But always welcome, a brother. Pleasure. Always a pleasure to join both of you, Don and Bill. Always, always a pleasure. <laughs> All right. We well, thank you. We well, thank you for that, though. Uh, just want to say uh, thank you just for doing what you did yesterday, uh, the other day. The price appreciation. But before we get into all that, you know, just get started with a word of prayer and we can go into the rest of it. Yes. Father God, thank you for this wonderful day you've given us, Lord. Thank you for all that you've given us, Lord. We are not deserve, deserving of it in any way, shape, or form, but your loving mercy and your grace is what keeps us, and we want to thank you. Bless this podcast, Lord. Bless the components. Bless the people that make things possible for your glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 So, my brother, thank you. Uh, it's a wonderful message because... You know, I know you're in another series of your kingdom life, and this is October, which is uh, Christian uh, service month, mm-hmm. and I, that's a big thing for me because I, being a deacon at the church, I, it's still in me is one of my gifts, the gifts of help, mm-hmm. and I want to thank you for bringing that message out mm-hmm. because I think that's something that needed to be said. It needed to be said yeah. for doing that for that uh before we go into i want to thank the the folks at the church that gave you a wonderful uh uh appreciation luncheon yeah. phyllis phyllis, staff. Mm-hmm. phyllis does a great job she sets it up like it's a king coming in so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's true that's true she it, it was it up, man. She, holds, she put, no she put the thrones up there too and had oh, the yeah. special chairs right yeah, she always man. has that pastor yeah. that's your chair yeah, mm-hmm. I almost, yeah. I, I, I almost must thought Jesus was coming, you know. <laughs> yeah, you would think so. <laughs> you need to change everything but, uh, to white, right, you know what I'm saying, and get ready. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, we, we really appreciate that, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, they did a great job. We're in a community that um, is very supportive of our gifts and our ministry. Mm-hmm. And um, it encourages us as pastors, that I must say, um, yeah. to continue to give up our best, you know. So it was yeah. And shout good, out and thank I, you to all, all who made it possible. Yeah, but believe me, they, they, if they could have done more, they would have. They would have done that. I'm just glad they don't have to pick <laughs> up that. This is COVID, thing. so they couldn't do too yes. much. Yes. Otherwise, yeah. it would have been totally yeah. different. Yeah. And, and I know Phyllis. Phyllis would have grabbed me to pick up that big bowl of fruit. I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm just standing there looking stupid holding a bowl of fruit. It's for you, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. But uh, I also want to thank Pastor Jen. I know she's taking care of her kids. Yeah, uh, I want to thank her for what she her ministry as well. Oh, yeah. You know, she couldn't attend. Uh, also, Gervon Marsh, who uh, makes mm-hmm. things possible to keep things going and yeah. um, for the services. So we want to thank him as well for past appreciation and our elders. 
We got to mm-hmm. take our elders. Yep. We really got to take our elders. They are there. They are there. Yeah. So I want to thank them for that. You know, so I'm I'm privileged to be associated with one special one. So mm. I want to I want to just put that in there. Oh yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> powerhouse, yeah. man. The powerhouse. The powerhouse. Man. At the powerhouse. Don't don't say nothing. But <laughs> her nickname. Hey, don't say nothing. But her nickname is Thundercat. All right, we'll just, oh, wow. oh. Okay. don't say nothing now. <laughs> don't want to even know why. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's perfectly legal. It's for it's for a prayer. It's for prayer. Okay. Very good, Joe. Very good. <laughs> I cleaned that up pretty well, right? <laughs> you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Pastor McCoy, I want to I want to uh, wish your wife a belated birthday, Sharice. Mm. Uh, for the belated birthday she had uh, it was along the time of the like i said the great disappointment that we had yeah um that uh you know we expecting christ to come at that mm-hmm. time yeah. but hey god blessed you with a jewel so yeah. your other half yeah. so god continue your blessing for her and, and your and your son mm-hmm. so let's get right to it all right your, your, your topic it, it was born of compassion how'd you fit that in there so one of the things I was trying to do with this sermon is most of the time we, when we talk about Christian service and ministry, right. we talk about do this, do that, do that. And I'm not sure if we have really taken a, a look as to why we haven't done that. Mm. Because no one, no, we all know that ministry is what we do as Christians. But mm-hmm. the question that I was asking is why don't we do it then? Why don't we do what we are supposed to do? Amen. And so I looked at Jesus and I asked, why did he do what he, do, what he did? Because mm-hmm. right? we always say, do what Jesus, you know, do, I would do what Jesus do or do what Jesus did. But why? And mm-hmm. as I was reading in the gospel of Matthew, um, I read, and yes, he, he was born and they, were, they crowned him king from the birth. And you see him coming, preaching, teaching. But then I came to this text and it says, Jesus was moved by compassion. Mm. Mm. And from there on, you find that everything Jesus did was mo- he was moved by compassion. He fed the, the 5,000. He was moved by compassion. Um, then you started seeing that compassion was kind of the motivating factor, the source of, of his energy, of his drive for ministry. And as I looked more into what this, board, what this moved by compassion meant, you know, in kind of the Greek language, I found that, that it, had, it was associated well, the noun, the noun and, and the Greek form of the, the word was associated mm. with the intestine, the movement, the womb, and all of these things. And, you know, I, I was just thinking, about what, what does this mean, God? And, and, and I came to the idea that this is how Jesus was, as I said, was controlled by compassion. He, he had no power over compassion. Compassion had control over him and gave life to his ministry. Mm. So in the same way that the, the, the womb had, had power to bring for life, procreation into the world, compassion had the power over Jesus, you know, mm. uh, and his ministry was born of compassion. So that's why I came about the, the, the topic, born of compassion. That actually was an excellent one. Yeah. Um, I would just go into this subject. You, it was Matthew, what, 35, 935? 935. 935. 937? Yeah. Right. When Jesus is walking on uh, the Sea of Galilee. Yeah. And he's walking along and he sees what Simon, he sees Simon Peter and he sees Andrew and he tells him, come follow me. Yeah. Uh, and then it goes into the part I like where, where you go into 37 and you talk about the harvest. Okay. Yeah. And you, I like the way you turned around when you saying the harvest, because the harvest are, are us. It's, it's us. And then you turn right. around saying the laborers. Right. Why, why do we have this shortage of laborers really? And, mm-hmm. you know, why do we have that? Mm-hmm. Right. It's, so, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, truly. Yeah, yeah. And that's a good question. Good question, right? Now, when you look at what happened with Jesus and why there's a kind of shortage of leadership, it was that people weren't being who they were supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Because when you look at what the Jew, what, what, what the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees were doing in, in chapter nine, they were criticizing Jesus. They even said to him, listen, you are, you are functioning by the prince of, of the devils. You are functioning mm. under the spirit of Beelzebub. Mm. Mm. But they were spending time criticizing Jesus, who was doing ministry, rather than doing ministry. Oh. 
this, so, so notice that, right? Instead of doing ministry, they were criticizing Jesus who was doing ministry. So they, 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 their priorities were misplaced. Right. And mm. that's why the people were harassed and helpless. They're, they're, they were bent on placing heavy burdens on the people rather than helping and lifting up the people and rather than serving the people, they were bent on criticizing Jesus's ministry. And so yeah. their attention was, their attention um, was misdirected, right? Their priorities went straight. Now it, it's possible. I just, just moving from a um, application from the text, it's possible that our priorities are in the wrong place in terms when it comes to Christian ministry. We are yeah. looking at the wrong thing, <laughs> right? We are looking in the wrong places. We are not focused and fixed on what we're supposed to be doing, or we are not, we're not being who we say we are supposed to be because the, the, the term shepherd is, is meant as a word for leaders. Right. Right. Now, Jesus used two different um, uh, metaphors. One, he uses shepherd, shepherd and uh, sheep, and he spoke about harvest and laborers, right? To, to do the same kind of thing, but in a different way, right? So the shepherd part was to say that they need more leaders are needed yeah right right so the sheep are helpless like sheep without shepherd they have no leadership in the harvest the people are ready but there's no one um, to, to guide them into the kingdom mm -hmm. these are the, yeah. the laborers the harvest is the one who bring in the crop who are ready right, right? so he highlighted the, the the lack of leadership in both aspects right mm. people are helpless and harassed without guidance and protection because there's no shepherd no leadership Okay. On the other hand, the people are also ready, right? But there's no one to guide them into the kingdom, right? And when you look at what the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees and the, the Jewish leaders are doing is criticizing Jesus, um, placing burdens on the people rather than actually leading them into God's kingdom. So it's possible that we lack leadership. We lack involvement in ministry because our priorities are misplaced. We are looking in the wrong places. And we are not functioning as, as, functioning as the Christians that we say we are. If the Jewish leaders were doing what they say they were, were, were leaders of the people, spiritual leaders, they would have given spiritual leadership. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I mean, think about compassion. It means that I feel sorry for you. Yeah. Why did you say that it's not an emotional thing? Right. So on the one, so there is an emotional sense, but, um, we place emphasis on that too much, mm. right? So mm -hmm. for Jesus, as I looked at it, right, in the, in the I looked at the, the Greek word there in terms of if its roots, where it comes from, and also how it is used in relationship to Jesus. As uh, I mentioned, the word there, the, word, the way it is written there is only used in connection with Jesus and how he does ministry, mm -hmm. Right? So compassion there for Jesus is not just, a, just like he felt something. It was used to identify him as God's Messiah. Hmm. It gave him an identity. Yeah. Function, yeah. Of compassion gave Jesus an identity. It was something akin to his character. Right? So I hmm. wanted to emphasize that emotions are ever-changing. They are fleeting. They, I'm, I'm happy today. I'm sad today, tomorrow. And generally, a basic principle is that if we live based on emotions, it's not going to be a, a um, it will be a dysfunction, a very dysfunctional life if we live based on our, our, our um, emotions. It's very like unstable, yeah. Very dysfunctional because, uh, I mean, if, 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 if say, say I, 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 with my wife, right? Today, I, I'm, I'm loving to her. Tomorrow, I am giving her the cold sh shoulder or in the same day or in the space of 10 minutes, I'm giving her these mixed emotions. It's, it's confusing for her, mm -hmm. right? And also she can't trust me. She can't rely on my support and my love for her, right? right? right. And so emotions as a church and as Christians, sometimes we, we, we function off emotions. Mm -hmm. um, that person um, hurt me. I'm not going to forgive them. I'm, I'm clinging to the emotion. But if I live out of the, I, my identity, yeah, to say I'm a Christian and to me, to, 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 if I'm supposed to live out of my identity, it requires of me to live a certain kind of way, right? Live based on certain principles, live in certain values and certain attributes rather than simply emotions, right? So emotions is a part of it, but I wanted to downplay the, the significance of 
import of, of, of emotions mm -hmm. and uplift the importance of values, principles, virtues, and attributes as a foundation for how we live um, and do ministry. Do you think that yeah. if, um, when we see a lot of uh, people that within church that say, well, you know, that person hurt me, I cut them off and I don't want to talk to them again. I don't want to do stuff with them again. Do you think it's also connected to their spiritual maturity? You know what? Um, it's true. You're right. It's, it, it is. And I, I, I struggle with that sometimes too, right? Because um, hurt leaves a kind of... Uh, how I say this, hurt leaves a kind of physiological memory in your body, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, if now I had a car accident and every time I drive past that place, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I feel a certain discomfort. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a certain memory about the sound of the cars in, those, in, mm -hmm. that, in that space. Yeah. There's just a sight of things in that place. Mm -hmm. It brings back a certain kind of memory and emotion and feeling to me already, mm -hmm. right? But I, in that moment, have to keep concentrated. Mm -hmm. I have to remember the principles of defensive driving in that moment to know that I can't let the emotions take over me. I have to be focused in that moment mm -hmm. and drive safely. Right. Mm -hmm. In a way, um, someone hurts me, but when I see them, it, it, it emo evokes memories of the hurt. But I have to now see them, right, through the eyes of grace as Jesus saw the people. Hmm. Right, and yeah. that takes that takes that's a lot. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a, a lot. lot. That's a <laughs> lot. That's um, a lot. <laughs> John J. Wald, I'm telling mm -hmm. you, I'm not there yet. Mm. Yeah, I, I have gotten hurt in my life, and I, I, I still pray about it. Mm. I'm, yeah, I'm not saying it's something easy, no. No, I'm not saying it's something easy. I'm saying it's difficult, it's very difficult mm. because yeah. it's, there's, a, there's a connection between um. Uh, so, so I got uh, um, I, um, someone who I thought was a friend really hurt me bad. Hmm. And when I was angry and I, I and, and I drove off in the car, a song was playing, and I can't I can't hear that song playing again without thinking of the hurt. That Emotion, yeah. Right, right, yeah. There's a connection to it, and hmm. so there are always things in our environment that will evoke memory and feelings of the hurt. Yeah. But we have to take control of those emotions those those stimuli and function on a principle of love grace and compassion it's hard i'm telling you from personal experience it is all, look, all i gotta do is say step in line bro that's all, that's right. all of us all of us <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I'm but, a but, forgiving guy, but my goodness, some things it just come at you yeah, tens for yeah, right yeah. in your face. And you're just like, Lord, Lord, help me with that. Yeah. And, but we tend to solve it ourselves, which is a bad thing. We try mm -hmm. to, you know, and do that in the grace. Mm -hmm. But uh, before I move on, I want to um, correct something. I made something uh, error. I wasn't, I went to speak about Matthew 935. This is when he was teaching with the disciples. I'm oh, talking yeah. about the seat guy totally off, so I'm sorry. He was in the talking, preaching uh, with the disciples, going through the town, giving them power to heal oh, the good. afflicted. And right. then you went to 10 1 when you talked about when Jesus gave him authority uh, mm. to perform these miracles yeah. boldly. So I want to clear that up. So I'm, I, I apologize. I'm like, I'm saying to myself, where did I get to see Galilee from? So my apologies. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I'm, well, sure I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you went back to that. I'm happy that you mm -hmm. went back to 35 because mm -hmm. verse 35 is kind of a quotation of um, chapter 4, verse. Uh, there's a, there's, Matthew uses this, 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 this uh, sentence, here, sentence here a mm -hmm. few times to show that Jesus is actually doing what he said he was going to do. Right. right. So he preached about the kingdom. But mm -hmm. then he actually healed to show the kingdom was present. Yeah. And Matthew used, used this to, as a kind of transitional statement throughout his, 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 his book. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to find a statement about two or three times where he's moving from one section to another. And he says, Jesus went through all the cities and villages, teaching and preaching. He uses this, this, this sentence a few times to emphasize what Jesus was doing. Mm -hmm. But as you mentioned um, 10 verse 1, chapter 10 verse 1, it's mm -hmm. the first time that Jesus is really giving the disciples them a, a 
a full participation in ministry to say mm -hmm. you're not you're no longer an observer you are going to be a participant in what i'm doing mm -hmm. right so in terms of mentorship there's a there's a kind of a statement they say in mentorship um the mentor the mentor teaches and the student observe and the and the mentee observes Observe, right? right the mentee teaches and the student participates hmm. sorry the mentor the mentor does and the student and the mentee observes mm -hmm. okay the mentee the mentor does and the student and the mentee does the mentee does and the mentor observes so it's that okay. transition from the mentee leading mm -hmm. the mentor leading to the mentee leading okay oh okay so i happened. see what you're saying jesus did everything mm -hmm. they watched Mm -hmm. They were going to do it with Jesus, and mm -hmm. then Jesus is going to lead them to do it, and Jesus kind of observes. That's kind of a, a strategy in terms of mentorship, right? Right. That's what happens here. Jesus is saying, I'm doing it. Come and do it with me. And he gave them authority and power to do the exact thing that he was doing. Heal diseases, cast out demons, right? Mm -hmm. So Heal the affliction, yeah. He not only called them, but he gave them the authority and the power to do ministry, mm -hmm. right? And so... This sermon was really a kind of a psychological analysis, analysis of evangelism and how Jesus did ministry and mm -hmm. how we can get behind the psychology of how we approach Christian service and ministry in total, right? Why don't we do what we are supposed to do mm -hmm. um, and what can get us to do it, yeah. right? So that's kind of what I was trying to do behind the scenes of the sermon. Right, kind of a psychological analysis of what Jesus was, was thinking, what was, was behind his motive, and all of these things, and try to give meaning to how we can find um, energy and compassion and purpose to do ministry. So if we move away from a, a, an emotional-based approach to ministry to a character-based, an attribute-based, an identity-based, to say, if I say I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. there's a certain kind of responsibility Mm -hmm. upon me to do what jesus did then mm. right it gives me a kind of motivation rather than to say preach teach do something i want to give an extra kind of motivation to take behind the scenes to see how i can give people um extra motivation or a kind of a source of a springboard to do ministry um rather than beating them over the head with a piece of stick i don't want to be the mm. preacher come and say go do this go do that mm. i want to outline go behind the scene so you can see the reason why, I want to give reasons why to what, why you're supposed to do it and show that you have all the resources for you to be able to do it. Wow. Yeah. Their disciples were the answer to their own prayers. <laughs> yeah. 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 Listen, when I saw I... that, when I saw that, because, and that's one of the things in, in terms of reading the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, Sometimes you miss some things. Mm -hmm. So I, ha I have a Bible that I got from, um, I went to this uh, conference event some years ago and they were giving me some Bibles that were just written without chapters, without verses. And oh, when wow. you read, yes, when you read, when you read it like that, you see some things that you'd never have seen if you read verse by verse mm -hmm. and chapter by chapter. Yeah. You, you don't you miss some things because notice in the last verse of chapter nine, Jesus says, pray. But if you forget that when you go to chapter 10, you miss the connection. That Jesus said, told them to pray, but then he tell them to act on mm. their prayers. Exactly. Right. Mm. So Jesus said, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers. Right. Yeah. And he said, he called them and he's the same word. He called his disciples and gave them authority to cast out demons and to heal disease and affliction. And I think verse two says he sent them out, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the word they are, the word they are sent out is the word that we use for the word apostle. The mm. word okay. apostle, he sent them to be apostles, sent out ones. Okay. Mm. Right? So I didn't go into that because I can't do too much in one sermon. I know. Right? Yeah, I totally understood. But the sent out there is, he sent them to be apostles. They were, kind, they were a special chosen from all the disciples. So he called 12 disciples, but these became apostles when he sent them out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's why I made, I made the comment that you can have a, a church full of members. Yeah, yeah. But, but we are the disciples, right? Ah, uh, yeah. We are the disciples. That's, you can have a church full of church. You can have a packed church with a lot of church members, 
Yeah. So where are the disciples? That's true. Mm. So that's, that's what happened. True. A lot of people were following Jesus. Crowds were following him. But mm-hmm. he called 12. 12 of them. And they the sent him out of the These were the ones who were supposed to be their prayers. And this, this teaches us something about prayer, which I didn't go into much. When we pray, you know, you know, there's a saying that my grandmother say, and, and all people say, we say, um, God helps those who help themselves. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's been so said many pray, a times. Yeah, when you pray, don't sit down. Go mm-hmm. ahead and live out your prayers, mm. right? And living out your prayers is an act of faith, and that's what Jesus sent the disciples to do, right? Go, call, go pray for disciples. Go pray for um, harvesters and laborers. But in the meantime, you have to go. And, and, and that was that for me was like, yeah, it, it, it's, it's kind of hypocritical for me to say, oh, Lord, pray, send people to go. And then I'm like, Lord, you know what? When you're sending, please don't send me. <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. yeah. It's that's like right. they, they're ready to send other people. <laughs> so uh, that's the kind of motivation I wanted to give people. When you're going to pray, yeah, um, be open to God using you. Hmm. Because one, uh, God's going to give you the authority. Because he gave him the authority and God's going to give him this authority, this power to do mighty works, works for God. Mm. Let me ask you this. Why do you think he gave him that authority at that time? Uh, so, so, so one, Jesus was, was starting to have a lot of following. Mm-hmm. A lot of following. People were, a, a lot of attention was coming to Jesus right now. Right. From, from, the, from the crowds, from the the religious people, the leaders, and in a sense, it, you'll find that mostly in John's gospel, you'll hear Jesus say, it's not his time yet. Yeah. And so he won't do something because it's not his time yet. He won't go to the feast because it's not his time yet. Matthew might not be so specific, but okay. you can see where Matthew is kind of holding back the persecution against Jesus yet, arms um, early. He's kind of uh, shielding Jesus in a sense because it's, it's not his time, but he's not saying out, out loud, right? Okay. So you'll see from here on that the, te- the attention and the, 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 the agitation towards Jesus kind of, kind of increases from here on. So the disciples um, being given the power and authority here, yes, was to have them now participate in ministry, but it wasn't Jesus' time yet to really okay. go head to head with the with the. the religious elite and the political system further down you'll see him going head to head with them but now Matthew's kind of holding back that tension and yeah. bringing to light the disciples who have been called and are now sent because Matthew is big on discipleship yeah. right and he's big on Jesus is going to leave the scene and you're going to have to take over the work and so he's kind of bringing it's kind of a teaser now into the scene teasing now the scene where Jesus is kind of stepping back and giving some more um active role to the disciples okay in 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 our case um we've got to take full control full responsibility because jesus has now left all of this responsibility on us to do ministry and 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 until he comes again okay thank you you said to we have to practice empathy why should Mm -hmm. we practice empathy as christians right so one of the things I was trying to do with that, um, and and you're you're, you're so keen. <laughs> so I like the keen. That's done. Um, yeah. So I I'm I'm saying to I'm saying to you, right? You must have compassion. You must have compassion. Mm. But I also said compassion is not a feeling. So mm. my question, right. my question then is, I'm thinking in terms of a member. Okay, pastor, you're telling me compassion is not a feeling, and you're telling me to have compassion. How then? How then do I have compassion? Mm. How then do I develop compassion? And one of the ways we can develop compassion, as I said, is to practice empathy. Um, Because empathy, when you practice empathy, it's one of the most powerful things that can happen. Mm. Because you can see someone grieving, you can see someone going through a difficult time, but you will never truly get a sense of what they are going through. And you you, you can never really get a sense unless it's happened to you. Mm. But to get in the basic sense, you have to step into their shoes. And to do that, empathy is the means of, of the avenue to how we do that. 
right? And I identified three ways we can identify, we can practice empathy. One, using our imaginations, right? Using our imagination mm -hmm. to say, I wonder what it's like to be in that person's shoe. Okay. That's one. Two, I might not know, I'll get a full understanding. So guess what I can do? I can ask the person and listen carefully, right? Because listening is a powerful tool to transfer um, messages emotively mm -hmm. and also give a true experience, a true, um, a sense of what the true experience is like. So mm -hmm. one, imagination, two, listening, mm -hmm. but also three, have there been anything in my life that compares or kind of compares to what that person is going through and i wonder if i think about what i have been through if i can get a sense of what the person is going through right now hmm. right so empathy practicing empathy helps us to develop compassion towards others right if i can remember that once i i needed someone's help or was in, in that place i can say man i know what you're going through it's a hard place and i want to help you hmm. right I want to help you. So, so empathy is a real gateway into developing and, and um, experiencing compassion for other people. Yeah. Okay, so now I have this question for you. We're in church. We all know our people, our fellow members, and we have some people that are extremely needy. Mm -hmm. Everything is always happening to them. There's always an issue. They always need help. They always need the, how much, empathy are we supposed to give people like that right so the question is after listening mm -hmm. how much of it is a fact of the person's experience or how much of it is the person's perspective and not really approaching things better so they can come out of the situation mm. right so mm. it, it takes some sense of it it takes some kind of evaluation right because mm. yeah. you can say oh life is so hard life is so and i look and i say well okay you life is so hard but you can drive to work you can mm. even live paycheck to paycheck mm. and i'm like you know things are not as really bad as you think and right. empathy mm. also brings people into a sense of reality of what they're experiencing mm -hmm. yeah right um for instance in um in, in, in John 11, with, with Jesus was empathizing with the, the grief of Mary and Martha over Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he also had to bring them to a point of reality where he's saying, listen, I am the resurrection and the life. You don't need to, you need to go down this path of grieving so much. Listen, I'm, I'm bringing you to a fact that he's going to be raised again. Mm -hmm. So there, it has to be based on facts and it has to be correct in perspective of the person who is, who is in the experience. Jesus says, listen, I know right now you're grieving and you can't, you can't see how a dead man can be raised, right? That's yeah. your perspective. Mm -hmm. But right now I'm saying to you that a fact of the matter is I am the resurrection and the life. You might not see it yet, but I'm giving you some facts of the matter that can change your perspective mm -hmm. and give you hope in the moment and help you to get out of the situation. Mm -hmm. So a part of, of helping someone in, your, in the question you ask, um, Ms. Don, is you're so needy, you're so needy. Let's analyze your, your circumstance. Let's take mm -hmm. a, a real look at it, mm -hmm. not through the lens of emotion, mm -hmm. but because emotions can, can cloud or perspective. Um, perspective. Yeah. But look at the facts of the circumstance and say, okay, this is a happening, this is a fact, um, and this is your perspective of the fact, but how can you change your perspective or what can I do to help you with the facts of the circumstance to help you out of that circumstance? So those people really have to, you, you're, empath you're empathetic towards them, but it, it, it has to be based on the fact of their circumstances and how they are perceiving things sometimes. That's how I would approach that. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I tell you, I don't know. It sounds like I need to get in the bag of empathy because <laughs> certain people, some people are pretty needy, like Don say. And it gets to the point where you're like, wow, it's like I, it, you want to ask God, can you just give me that gift yeah. of being empathetic? But to turn yes. it around, <laughs> <laughs> if I was supposed to give, give empathy to us as a gift, oh man, um, I think would have missed would have would have missed some some real opportunities to be to be human, real human, yeah. authentic yeah. about what we do. Mm. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. We'd, we'd miss yeah. some opportunities. Mm. Yeah. That's true. Well, to to piggyback on that one, uh, how can you how can you church members to get them to be empathetic when a lot of them 
and you see them and you you relate with them and you see how they are, but their lifestyle is not empathetic. Mm. Mm. I mean, I, I'm trying to turn it around where it's like they're ready to give you the word so fast and so quick, but when it's time to empathy, it's like it's not there. It's just not yeah. there. Yeah, you know, um, I experienced that a lot. It's it's a good point you made because notice what Ellen I, I made a quote about what Ellen White said, right? Ellen White spoke mm -hmm. about um, saying that Christ's method alone can bring true success. Mm -hmm. And notice how she she said, right? He mingled with people. He 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 got into where they were. He went where they were, mm -hmm. right? If they were on the ground, he sat at the ground. Mm -hmm. if, where, where, if, if he was. Uh, Nicodemus, um, Zacchaeus was in a tree. He went close to the tree, come down. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. He wants to be where they are. And then right. she said, sympathize with them. Mm -hmm. Right? Kind of empathize, right? Mm -hmm. He ministered to their needs, won their confidence. Mm -hmm. The last thing he did was to say, come follow me. Mm -hmm. Or the last thing he did was to say, here's a Bible text, read it and find Jesus. Right? Jesus' approach was need-based, but sometimes we invert it and we say, okay, follow Jesus and Jesus will fulfill your needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. not, that's not how Jesus did it. No, that's not how it works. He fulfilled yeah. needs and then he said, come and follow me. Mm -hmm. right? And that, that's why Ellen White highlighted his method as the, she said, the, the method that will bring true success in reaching people. And so you're right sometimes that, you know, we are so Christian. Yeah. <laughs> you know? We're so Christian that if I don't give you Jesus, I haven't given you anything. <laughs> right? right. Um, here is Jesus. And if you don't want to take Jesus, um, go die in your hunger. Go mm -hmm. die in your sickness. Go die in your grief. If you don't want to take the Jesus that I give to you, but that's not Jesus' method. Yeah. <laughs> you know? that, it's not. I mean, that would turn me away more than anything. Right, right. So you're, you're right to highlight that. You're right to highlight that. Yeah. Why should we reflect on our lives to look where we're coming from? before we empathize with somebody? It prevents judgment. Mm. Wow. Right? Here's I a like that response. <laughs> Very good. I like that response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Early in Islam, right? Mm. We, said, we see some people that are really needy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? And um, without a true sense of what they're going through, without analyzing, without listening, looking at the facts of the circumstance, I can be like, um, that person just, they're always like that, they're always like that, they're always like that, right? But that's, that's, that's kind of a judgmental stance without saying, okay, let me imagine first. Let mm. me listen. Let me look at myself and think, what might they be going through before mm. saying, you know, you know just a, a judgmental approach. Right. So when I look at myself, I re I'm reminded and listen, I, I, I tell I tell people that um, being a pastor is a privilege and a gift because, and, and, and I don't, I, I, I take it really seriously, right? Um, and that's why people, you can call me Kevin, you can call me anything. If you don't call me pastor, I'm fine. I, I'm, 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 and I'm serious about it, I'm fine. Um, because I'm careful not to, think too much of myself in this role because I can be up today and I can be down tomorrow, right? Right, right. The thing that the fall for someone tomorrow is the fall that I can be counseling someone about a fall today and mm. tomorrow I find myself in the same situation. I'm human before I'm a pastor. Mm. And, mm. I, and I can't allow myself to forget that. Mm. I can't allow myself to forget that. Anything that someone is being criticized for, being judged for, or being corrected for, or... Being, being scrutinized for, I am susceptible to that person or even more than the person because I am in a position of power. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. I am in a position yeah. of power and I am more susceptible because of my position, mm. my role, mm. right? And so I'm very careful to take the, 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 the most thoughtful, humble path towards any circumstance because I know I am susceptible to for the most part, because I'm a public figure, I, I'm, I'm in a position of power. And as I said, fundamentally, I'm a human before I'm a pastor. Amen, brother. I was born human. I wasn't born a pastor. And if I'm not a pastor tomorrow, I'm going to always be human. I have to remember right. who I am, my frailties, and my faults. I have to think about those to keep me humble 
and uh, um, and to take the lower seat at all time. Mm. Yeah, for that. Yeah. I, so I yeah. got to pay for our passes, Don. Yeah. That's why we got to pay for our passes. Yeah, that's why we used to. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, man. man. We got to pray for our pastors. So it, it's, it's, it's easy to be judgmental, but it's, um, it's harder to be empathetic and to see. So my thing is, let me look at what that person is going through and think, have I been there? What was my experience like? Who was there to help me? What did I need in that moment? And mm. how can I be that for the person in that moment? Mm. Yeah, that's being empathetic. Yeah. So, you know, and, and that's a principle. So I, I had to, when I was in, when I was doing my, my, my graduate studies, I did a, a chaplaincy program, clinical pastoral education, a course for chaplains. And one of the things that we had to do in terms of um, wrestling with, with grief and death, we had to come to terms with where are the places in my life I have experienced grief and hurt and how I have dealt with them? Mm. Have they been resolved? Mm. And listen, mm-hmm. when I did that course, and I had to reflect on, on, on um, because I, I, I wasn't raised with my father. I met my father when I think I was about 13 or so. And when I started getting to know him, he, he, you know, he, he died, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, the first, the last time I saw him was at one of his birthday parties. And that was the last time I saw him was the first time he, I heard him say to me, I love you. Oh, wow. Right? Mm-hmm. That was the, the, the first time I heard him say, I love you, was the last time I saw him. Wow. Right? And when I was supposed to go see him, he called me on the phone to go see him. And he, he was killed, I think, a day or so before I was supposed to go see him. Oh, was wow. Right? Wow. And um, I, I didn't recognize how much I was still not, I mean, I didn't recognize how much I had missed him, how, how his death affected me until I went in that program. And one of the things that affected me was this, and what we believe is, is important how we grieve to. Yes. Because the seven Adventists, I believe that, right, the dead are dead, mm-hmm. right? They are not alive, they're not up with God or anything. Mm. And she asked, she said, my, my coach in the moment, the trainer, the, the coach in the moment said to me, even though he is not here, your relationship to him um, is not dead also, mm. right? And I'm like, wow, that, that freed me and caused me to grieve in a different way. Okay. Mm. Right? I can grieve his death, but I can still hold on to the relationship that we had. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. Sometimes we think that because the person is dead, our relationship is dead with them. Yeah, yeah. Right? And that gave me a new way into grieving, a new approach to grieving right mm-hmm. and so i had to deal with death before i could go go out and tell somebody or help somebody with how they were going to grieve yeah uh, i had to know what it feels like yeah. to grieve yeah. first and to grieve properly properly to help someone yeah. to grieve properly yeah. and so yeah. in the case of compassion i have to look at what i have been through what it was like for me how i got out of that moment to help me have compassion for someone else yes mm. So, so yeah, <laughs> I tell you, yeah. Awesome. Wow. I tell you, I can see why people think about testimonies because they're real. Yeah, they're real. Yeah, yeah. they're That's, real. Yeah, they're real. yeah. yeah. I can they're see. Real. I can see. Now you be now, and also you're more empathetic as well. Yes, mm-hmm. I'm more understanding where grief is concerned now. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you could you could yeah. you can empathize uh, yeah. empathize on what's going on in that life, and they'll look at you like you know you're just not talking from a title perspective you're talking from someone has actually experienced that experienced yeah 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 and so wow. one of the things um sometimes and i know as seven adventists we do believe that the dead are you know that the dead are not living that they are resting and i'm careful when i'm preaching funerals now one you know at times i've heard many preachers do it and understanding grief i no longer say that you know the dead is dead and and, and preach that you know and there are some way, as sometimes I said, Adventists, we, we, we emphasize death with a certain kind of finality that we forget about the resurrection. We want to stress the fact that um, when a person is dead, they're not in heaven, that we forget about the hope of the resurrection sometimes. Yeah. Because we're trying to combat this idea of living our souls floating. We forget a good part about death, right? Mm. Which is wow. the hope of the resurrection. Yeah. So I say that to say, um, sometimes we can 
correct what is wrong by focusing on what is right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. No? I can see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Don, do you have anything else, Don? Yeah, just one more thing. God will judge us. Mm -hmm. um, judge us based on our work in the harvest. Right. So Matthew, Matthew is doing this kind of thing from the beginning. Matthew is kind of setting up a sheep and a goat comparison throughout his gospel, right? right? right, right. Yeah. He's always having these, these dichotomies. Mm. Um, in, in the gospel, in, in chapter one, you find those who want to praise Jesus versus those who want, those who want to kill Jesus, right? These mm -hmm. are, the, 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 these are the, the, the wise men who, who are coming to praise Jesus, but the Israelites and Herod want to kill Jesus, mm -hmm. right? And you're going to find that a dichotomy is being built in the gospel of, of Matthew around believing in Jesus and doing what Jesus says. Hmm. Right, you find in, in, in chapter seven where Jesus says, um, "Those who build their house in the sand versus those who build their house in the rock." Mm -hmm. Matthew is this yeah. continual thing in his gospel, setting up people against, is either you're for Jesus or against him. Right. Yeah. And we see it right here where the harvest is also about a judgment scene. Right. It's it's a point of judgment, and the culmination of that is in Matthew twenty five where Jesus says. At a judgment day, God separates the goat from the sheep. Yeah. And that sense is here in this passage where seeing should lead to action. And if you're not seeing, if your seeing is not leading you to act out of compassion, then you might very well end up on the wrong side at the end of the day. Mm. Right? Yeah. So if you're a disciple and your, your, your compassion is not leading you to loving actions that are in, in accordance with the kingdom, you can be sure that when the king comes, Julie cast out of the kingdom. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Don't like oh. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. No. Huh? All right. Well, thank you for that, Don. I thought she always come up with some wonderful questions, don't she? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wonderful questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pastor, we want to thank you for taking that time. Just to give you that, that message in, in, in some clarity on that. Yeah. Uh, about yeah. that. Um, because... I know truly that uh, I think I do a pretty good job, but, but only God knows how mm -hmm. truly feels in your heart about empathy, you know, and do mm -hmm. the, the way he, the way he sees it and the way we need to see it. And we're a long way from that. And all we can do is just continue to ask God to open our hearts and to be willing to have empathy. So I want to thank you. So before we go on, Pastor, if you could lead us out with a word of prayer. Certainly. Christ. God of compassion, we're asking that you help us to see the world through your eyes and to act in the way that you did out of compassion. Yes. And I know sometimes because we have been hurt and sometimes because our eyes sometimes does not tell the truth of what a person is going through, we relate in the wrong way. But we're asking you, help us to enter into a person's experience and to see what they're going through through the eyes of compassion that we can attend to their needs and minister to them in the way that you have called us to do because you have given us the authority, the power of the Holy Spirit to care for people and to minister to their needs. Mm -hmm. And so I ask right now, may compassion for us be not only or mostly an emotion, but may it be a principle where we say, I'm a Christian, I'm going to live like a Christian and I'm going to act like a Christian and care for people like a Christian. We pray and we ask that this will be our life's work. This will be our life. This is how we live life going forward because we want to be in your kingdom when you come. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. I hope you have a good week with your rest of your family. Mm -hmm. And do that, and we'll continue. Just continue being yourself. I like what you said. You're human before you're a pastor. Love it. That's right. Love it. Love it. Love mm -hmm. it. Love it. Mm -hmm. And I also want to say to our podcast listeners to listen to more to Pastor McCoy's full sermon. Go to Plantation uh, SDA Church or YouTube ch or the YouTube channel, or simply go to PlantationSDA.tv. And also subscribe to the YouTube channel to be notified of our upcoming live streams and programs. 
And lastly, please subscribe to your favorite podcast app. Of course, Don, that would be us. That's right. I'm going to hit that like button, as you like, say. Like. <laughs> yeah. I want to thank you for that. And we want to continue to thank you guys for taking the moment out to uh, keep listening to us on a weekly basis. Don, once again, it's always a pleasure. You make everything totally complete. You're welcome. And we have a few birthdays. Just That's right. You. We're going at the next. Going We're going to next. do the birthdays. Um, on the mm-hmm. 24th is Sadiq. Murray, I do not know, and I think I'm butchering. I him. heard the name. I, I heard know. the name. It sounds familiar, but yeah, it does. Face with the name. Don't remember, mm-hmm. but happy birthday anyway. Today is the 25th yes. of October, and that is Mozart's birthday, Mr. Mo. Mr. What Mo's birthday? Yes, All right, we gotta send him a shout out. Mm-hmm. Send him a shout out. Happy birthday, Mr. Yeah. Mo. And mm-hmm. Aaron Anderson, April Ma, and Kinta Richardson are on the 27th. Okay. And Pastor Nugent's wife, Melissa, is on the 28th. All right. We got to bring them all in there for that. that. Happy birthday to everybody. And of course, I have to put in for my favorite son. Oh, yeah. Today, Mr. Matthew. That's right. Happy birthday. Yeah. He likes to call me Pops. So uh, I'll take that. There you go. You're a Pops, Joe. You're a a Pops. pops. Yeah, he calls me a Pops. All right, I want to thank you once again. Once again, Don, I hope you have a wonderful week. Pastor, same to you as well. Yeah. And appreciation, it doesn't just have to be on a Sabbath. It we doesn't. appreciate you always, Pastor. Always. We appreciate, always. You always. appreciate you always. Appreciate you both and the work that you're doing, sharing the gospel through to your podcast. Thank you. Yeah. That's all that matters, man. We have fun doing it. We do. That's right. That's right. All right. So all our podcasting is God bless and continue being more empathetic. <laughs> <laughs>